welcome everyone to our Tuesday leaders development tonight in Jesus name Amen. and uh, this is the first time we're meeting together after the retreat wasn't that a great retreat libration somebody help me shout libration total libration of a permanent in your life and ministry and local churches and in the whole church in Jesus name Amen. the follow-up continues therefore you do your best to make sure that all those that came into the kingdom at that time will make all the efforts and integrate them for the church in Jesus name Amen. let's pray together father we thank you tonight we bless your name for bringing your people together thank you for the passion we have thank you lord because of the commitment consecration we have and we pray that this work will prosper together in all our hands in jesus name Amen. we ask good lord you give us understanding tonight and every word you speak will find a profitable ground in every heart in jesus name amen. we thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray amen. tonight we're looking at one of the chapters in the book of revelation and it's revelation chapter 14. i know that you know already that the book of revelation is divided into three parts chapter 1 the glory of christ chapters 2 and 3 will have the message to the church and for the church age and then chapter 4 all through to chapter 20 we have the period after the church that's where you have the rapture you have the great tribulation and you have a god's judgment upon the people who will still be rebellious and unrepentant even until that time and then chapters 20 and 21 and 22 we have the revelation of the glory and the splendor of heaven and now we come to chapter 14 in chapter 14 this is within the period of the great tribulation but you need to understand all those chapters referring to the period of the great tribulation they have what we call parenthesis parenthesis that means a window that is open just to tell us about the redeemed about the ransomed about the people that come into the kingdom even at such a time that's a such parenthesis you find in verse in chapter 7 where it talks about the 144,000 people that will be sealed for the Lord our God and then verse 9 all through to verse 17 I saw a great multitude that no one could number and then one of the living creatures said unto John who are these and he said I know not you know and then he said these are the people that came out of great tribulation and they have washed their robes white in the blood of the lamb and he says they shall hunger no more and he shall thirst no more and God himself shall wipe away all tears from their eyes that's the parenthesis then you come to chapter 8 and it opens with the silence in heaven and all the things have followed as you come to chapter 14 chapter 14 talks about the 144,000 that are sealed of the Lord and it refers to them as the redeemed as the first fruits it refers to them as the people that are not defiled with women it refers to them as the people that follow after the lamb and then it comes to if you look at all the other verses there you'll see what refers to the children of god every time and of every age now let, let's uh, look at it this way anywhere you're reading in the bible 
either you are reading from some of the chapters in genesis or in exodus or you come to the psalms or you come to matthew or you come to the book of revelation anywhere you are reading you stand in that place where you are reading you look back before that time and there are things that you will see in that place you are reading that will refer to the people that can be applied to the people before that time and then you look forward beyond that passage you are reading and you find in that passage things that refer to the people that are still to come and if you look at chapter 14 look at chapter 14 for example look at verse 1 in chapter 14 verse 1 it says and i looked and lo a lamb stood on mount zion you can see that's referring to the lord jesus christ looking back behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sins of the world look at verse 2 it tells us in verse 2 and i heard a voice from heaven as and it says as the voice of many waters you are standing there as you look back the voice of the lord came from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and you look at the future and you see that that voice is still going to come look at verse 3 it tells us in verse 3 and they sang as it were a new song before the throne as we look back from that verse in the Psalms he put a new song in my mouth as you look ahead when we all get to the other side we're going to sing a new song the point is it's not only applicable to the 144,000 so you cannot read this and say well that's for the 144,000 and since the rapture would have taken place we don't have any application at this time look at verse 12 it tells us in verse 12 of that same chapter it says here is the patience of the saints you see if you are talking about patience you look back from chapter 14 the patience of the saints and then here are they that keep the commandments of God you look back you look to the future here are the people keeping the commandments of God and the face of Jesus in the past before this verse that is before revelation the faith of Jesus I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me look at verse 13 in verse 13 it tells us and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me right blessed at the dead which die in the lord from henceforth as you look at that verse you look back blessed at the people blessed at the dead that die in the lord like uh, like uh, stephen like paul the apostle i finished my cause and i fought a good fight now there is a crown of of righteousness that is laid up for me all those people of the past that died in the lord this is applicable to them as we're living today it applies to us and then the people that will still come it applies to them and look at the rest of that verse it says yea says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them that's applicable to people before this verse before revelation and that's applicable to all people even after chapter 14 the point is this that as you look at the book of revelation you don't transfer everything only to the future and make it dispensational that is anything i read after chapter 3 of revelation does not concern me it's talking about the people of the great tribulation period you see everything still applies to us that's why we're taking we're looking at two verses today in revelation chapter 14 verses 4 and 5 so that you know this applies to us let's come back now revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 4 these are they that were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth and then he goes on to say these were redeemed from among men 
been the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And then in verse 5, it tells us in verse 5, And in their mouth was found no girl, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Tonight, we're looking at the message in this perspective, under this subject, persevering to follow the Lamb to glory. We're following the Lamb. We believe in the Lamb. He has taken our sins away. We're washed in His blood. We're redeemed by the price that He paid on the cross of Calvary. And since that time, we began our journey. And we're now on pilgrimage. And we're the pilgrims of the Lord. And we follow the Lamb whithersoever He guides, and whithersoever He leads, and whithersoever He goeth. What He would have been doing here on us now, if He were here, that's exactly what He expects us to be doing. And we persevere in that because He that endures unto the end the same shall be saved persevering to follow the lamb to glory we keep on following him until we get to glory we're dividing the message to three parts number one possessing characteristic virtues of christ through grace that's where we start if we're going to be redeemed and if we're going to stay redeemed we must possess we must have we must have in our heart in our life the characteristic virtues of Christ and it is by grace point number two preparing chase virtues for Christ in glory already you have seen uh, that those people that will be with christ in glory they'll be called virgins they'll be called undefiled and we have a lot of people some have just come into the kingdom they're new creatures in christ and some have been there even before this time uh, and we're preparing them as chaste virgins for christ when he comes in glory number three is persuading uh, converted vessels persuading uh, converted vessels you see when we are converted we're referred to as vessels vessels that are cleansed vessels that are purged vessels that are washed ready for use by the master we were vessels before vessels unto dishonor and now conversion brings us as to vessels of honor all the believers under our leadership under our teaching they are vessels and those who are born again are converted vessels and we want them to continue in the goodness of god and that brings in everything we do so that by the grace of god all the people that the lord has given us will be able to say on that final day we lost none persuading converted vessels to continue in his goodness let's come to number one number one we have a chapter a revelation chapter 14 we're looking at verse 4 it says these are they that were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they that follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these were the redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto god and to the lamb you'll see uh, three things there number one freed from godlessness freed from godlessness the grace of god has come into their lives and the goodness of god has come into their lives and now they are not defiled anymore number two they are following him by grace following the lord step after step and day after day following him by grace number three the first fruits unto god let's look at one there freed from godlessness you see is the lord jesus christ is the lamb of god that can set us free 
that can cleanse us that can justify us and then the lord will look at us as if we had never seen as sins are taken away as sins are not just covered they are cleansed as sins are blotted away and if the sun shall set you free make you free you shall be free indeed look at hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 7 we're reading from verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That's a mouthful. That is, we come to God, is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. We know that there is no salvation in any other. And there is no other path. There is no other avenue. There is no other sacrifice. And there is no other redemption through which we can be saved. It's the Lamb. Behold, I looked and saw the Lamb. When you see the Lamb as the one that died for you. When you see the Lamb as the one that shed his blood for you. And you hold on to him. And you believe him. And you accept his salvation. He is able to save them, whether they are Saul of Tassos and they're deep in sin, or whether they have gone into the edge, into the very extreme of sinning and evil. He is able to save them to the uttermost as to come to God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them after we are saved he doesn't leave us on our own and to say now you are saved do your best and try your best and work out everything he's still making intercession for us and in verse 26 he tells us for such an high priest became us such an high priest actually befeeds us who is holy and harmless and undefiled that's the word there because it's undefiled because it's holy and because it's harmless separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens what characteristic he has is able to reproduce in us holy able to make us holy harmless able to make us harmless undefiled able to make us undefiled separate from sinners is able to keep us separated from the world made higher than the heavens he frees us from all ungodliness he frees us from godlessness we're looking at psalm 119 in psalm 119 we're looking at verse 1 psalm 119 verse 1 blessed at the undefiled in the way undefiled you see what we're reading about in revelation chapter 14 verse 4 it says these are they that were not defiled undefiled and it says even at this time now we can have that blessedness we can have the goodness of the lord and the grace of god that brings salvation appearing to us can make us undefiled free completely from godlessness blessed are they it says the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the lord look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart in verse 3 then it tells us they also do no iniquity it's not only for the people of that time after the rapture has taken place even now at this time those of us who taste of the grace of god it says they also do no iniquity they walk in his ways in james chapter 1 we're reading from verse 27 james chapter 1 we're looking at verse 27 it says in verse 27 pure religion even at this time and undefiled before god you see if we're going to say that 
when is the religion that's acceptable to the Lord we must be undefiled before God and the father and it's this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world and those are the people that when the trumpet shall sound and Christ shall come they are the people that will go with the Lord on that day and he says they will walk with me in white because they are worthy they have not defiled their garments look at number two there number two there is talking about following him by grace we're following the lamb as we come to revelation chapter 14 verse 4 you will see what the lord is telling us about the people that will be in fellowship with him in glory these are they which were not defiled with women they are defiled in the way but they are virgin and it says these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth again let's remember that it's not only for the people of that time even for the people at this time and the people that followed Jesus at the time he was here on earth he expected and he still expects that following him following him will be a continual scene a perpetual sin will be daily following after the Lord. And what's the implication of following the Lamb? And following the Lord, following Him by grace. In John chapter 8, reading from verse 11. John chapter 8, verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do i condemn thee go and sin no more and then the lord made application of that to all other people that are going to follow after him in verse 12 in verse 12 it says then speak jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me remember the person referred to in verse 11 it's a woman neither do i condemn thee woman go and see no more now there is application to everybody and it says he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness the darkness of occultism is gone and the darkness of idol worship is gone and the darkness of a sinfulness all that is gone and the darkness of iniquity and the darkness of transgression all that is gone he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life that's what he expects of us we're following after the lord and following after the lord and we walk in the righteousness of the lord characteristics of christ reproduced in us because we're converted and because he gives us the grace to keep on following after in chapter 10 john chapter 10 reading from verse 4 in john chapter 10 verse 4 he tells us and when he put forth his own sheep his own sheep not the goats his own sheep they're born again they are converted they have come to the bishop and the savior of their soul he goeth before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice the sheep the redeemed of the lord the ransomed of the lord the saved souls the people who have embraced him accepted him and received him and they have benefited from his sacrifice on calvary it says they follow him for they know his voice in verse 5 verse 5 says and a stranger will they not follow a stranger will they not follow for but they will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers it tells us in romans chapter 14 romans chapter 14 verse 17 romans chapter 14 reading from verse 17 for the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness and peace and joy 
in the Holy Ghost. That's the characteristic of Christ himself, that he has righteousness and is the Prince of Peace and he rejoices evermore. And he says that same attribute and that same characteristic and that same uh, uh, disposition will be in every one of us righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 19, uh, verse 19 tells us, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. Therefore, as we're converts, as we're children of God, here is our calling. We follow after the things that make for peace, wherewith we may edify, build up, challenge, encourage, uplift one another. Thereby we edify another. In First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-one. First Peter chapter two. Verse 21, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that he should follow his steps, that he should follow his steps. You see what the Lord is calling us to? He wants us to follow the Lord and follow the steps of the Lord every time in a relationship with the Heavenly Father. What did Christ do? How did Christ obey the Father, follow his steps, and also in a relationship with his disciples? How did he relate with the disciples as we relate with workers under the leaders? They will relate with members in the church as Christ lived so we also should live and then as we interact one with the other we look at what christ would have done and we do exactly that in verse 22 in verse 22 it tells us who did no sin that's the characteristic of christ and that's what he has called us to that we live a life that is free from sin a life that is purified from sin a life that is totally cleansed as he did no sin so we do no sin neither was guile found in his mouth neither will deception or guile or lie found in our mouth in verse 23 it says who oh, when he was reviled he reviled not again there's no retaliation in the life of any child of God that is following after Christ. Once uh, somebody begins to operate by the principles of the world, and they knocked me, I will knock them, and they did this to me, I will do the same thing to them. We're not following Christ anymore. But you understand, the people that will be with him in glory, they are the people that follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. And it says, here is the life of the Lamb. Here is the life of the lowly one, of the meek one. Here is the life of Christ that when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but he committed himself to him that judges righteously. And then in verse 24, he tells us who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we've been dead to sins that's a life we're now dead to sin it's like we're dead and those things of the past do not influence us do not attract us do not suck us in into them again like christ we do no sin now we're dead to sin we should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed by whose stripes I am healed. I said, I am healed. healed. You're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, we're coming to number three now, first fruits unto God. Let's come to Revelation chapter 14, and we're reading from verse 4. In Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 4, these are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. Then it says, These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. It says, These 
were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God redeemed being the first fruits unto God saved converted being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb were referred to as the first fruits that is the result of his sacrifice the first fruits of his sacrifice the people that believe on the lord jesus christ and then the effect and the power and the purging of the sacrifice of christ as taking root as taking place are taking effect first in their lives that's how God referred to the children of Israel when they were brought out of the land of Egypt. In Jeremiah chapter 2, reading from verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. He started with them. He was still to bring the Gentiles in, but he said, they are the first fruits. And what do we know about the first fruits? The first fruits will be holy. Israel was holy unto holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase. In Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 11, we're reading from verse 16. And if the first fruit be holy, the lump also is holy. It's talking about those who have come to the Lord. Maybe you are the first person that came to the Lord in your family. That's first fruits. And maybe we are the first people in our community that really know the Lord in a really deep sense. We're the first fruits. And it says, if the first fruit be holy, then the lump also is holy. And if the root be holy, then are the branches also holy it tells us in james chapter 1 verse 18 james chapter 1 we're reading from verse 18 of his own will begat ye us with the word of truth begat ye us were born again we're children of god and because we're children of god we're begotten of him with the word of truth look at the result of that that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures first fruits of his creatures so when he talks about the first fruits he's talking about those who are born again those who are children of god and then they may not have any other example around them but they'll be the first and they walk in righteousness like enoch did not have anybody around him but he said i'll be the first fruits and there was none of his members of his family raptured and taken away to heaven he says i'll be the first fruits when when you read the promise of God when you see what Christ has provided and you plunge into it and you possess that and you experience that it might not have happened to anybody you know but then you become the first fruits unto God and the first fruits unto the Lamb we're coming to point number two now in point number two we have preparing chase virgins for Christ in glory preparing chase virgins for christ in glory and under this section we're looking at three things number one virtuous on the false saints for glory those are the only people that have been prepared for glory they're virtuous they're saintly they're undefiled they're on their way to glory number two valiant or spotted souls without guile those are the people that will be with the Lamb. Those are the people that will abide with the Lamb. And then Christ will come as the bridegroom. And then those of us who are alive will be caught up together with him. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But you know, the qualification he expects that the blood of Jesus would have wrought, would have done in our heart, in our life, is that it makes us valiant. It makes us courageous, it makes us fearless, it makes us bold, and it makes us undefiled, unspotted, without guile. Number three, vigilant 
undistracted sight from glory. That is, we're vigilant and we focus our attention and focus our gaze on glory and we do not allow anything whatsoever coming from any direction to distract us from the glory that is to come vigilant on distracted sight from glory look at number one virtuous on the false saints for glory as you come to revelation chapter 14 Reading from verse 4, it says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. For they are virgins. Do you know that that same language, that same picture, that same figure, that same image, and that same cleanliness and holiness, the Lord expects of us who are here today, who are looking forward to the time of the rapture. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, reading from verse 2. For I am jealous over you, over you beloved believers, over you Christians, over you converts, over you new creatures, Paul the Apostle said to these Corinthian believers, he said, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that's the bridegroom, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, look at this, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, that I may present you as chaste virgin to Christ. That same jealousy you have over the converts who have come to the Lord during this uh, past retreat or any other time. Maybe you are their father in the Lord, you are their mother in the Lord, or you are instrumental one way or the other in bringing them into the kingdom. You are jealous over them. And if they're going to places where the word of God is not being preached in full, you are jealous over them in all wisdom and with all skillfulness, you want to tell them this will be better for you because you want them to be chased virgins unto Christ. In Second Peter, reading from chapter 1, verse 3, it was that virtue of the virgin and that virtue of righteousness and that virtue of godliness to be in the heart to be in the life of all the people that are called into christ that's why it says in second peter chapter 1 verse 3 according as his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness is telling us christ has provided everything and then according to that divine power he has made available for you and for me and for all our converse for everyone that we are following up on he says he has given all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him through the knowledge of him that means then as we want the people as we want the members as we want the congregation to be pure and chase and be a virgin unto the lord you're teaching them you are emphasizing to them the knowledge of the lord jesus christ who calls us to glory and to virtue in verse 4 it says in verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these by those promises we take those promises to God in prayer. We take those promises to God on our knees. We emphasize those promises to ourselves. We embrace those promises and we clinch to those promises. And we say, Lord, this is what we have promised Do as you have said. By those promises, ye might be partakers of the divine nature 
partakers of the divine nature all the people we are following up and then ourselves we're not trying to live the christian life in our own strength in our own power because the strength of man and the power of man will fail you not by power not by might but by my spirit says the lord as we become partakers of the divine nature then we escape the corruption that is in the world through laws i pray it will be in every one of us in jesus name matthew chapter 25 we're reading from verse 1 matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 1 it says then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and they went forth to meet the bridegroom virgins and five of them you know the story were wise and five were foolish and when the sound came that the bridegroom cometh they tried to uh, trim up their lamb only those who are wise who had oil in their lamb the lamb kept on burning and they were the people that went in with the bridegroom look at verse 10 in verse 10 of that same chapter it says and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready the five virgins that were ready they were the people that went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut later those foolish virgins came and they said lord open to us and the lord said i know you not from whence ye are and the conclusion in verse 13 in verse 13 then it says what she therefore Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. He wants, he wants us to be virgins. He wants us to be chaste virgins. He wants us to be pure. He wants us not to be adulterated in any way so that when he will come, we'll be presented to him as chaste virgins. We're coming to number two there. Number two, the valiant, unspotted souls without God. Underline that word valiant in that point. You know, the devil is not a coward. The devil is not timid. The devil will try to catch anyone. And if you are a believer, a child of God in the world we're living now, all those some believers around you that will want to tempt you, persecute you, and make you cringe, make you cower, subdue you, overpower you, they're very bold. And if you are like, you know, you can't confront anything, you can't confront any situation, and you are, you know, timid, I'm just a lowly fellow, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't know what I'm going to do, the devil will take advantage of you, but you'll be valiant in Jesus' name. That amen is not good enough. We have to be valiant and bold, courageous and fearless. Once we know this is the way, walk in the arena, then with boldness, and then with power, the power of the Spirit, and with the strength of the Spirit of God, we move on, resist the devil. That devil will flee from you. You will not run, but he will run from you in Jesus' name. Unspotted, unspotted. That's what the devil is fighting for. He wants you to have sport and stain and transgression. He wants you to backslide. But thank God, I will not backslide. Are you there? I said, I will not backslide. The strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord will be in your life every moment at every crossroad and every point of trial and temptation in Jesus' name. Valiant, unspotted souls without God. Look at Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, we're looking at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, And in their mouths, was found no girl 
for they are without fault before the throne of God. That's what he makes of us, that we will be without God. To start with, those of us who have been committed into the work of God, and he has committed this gospel, and he has committed this ministry into our hands. He wants us to be that valiant, uncompromising, without girl and without any timidity in our spirit in first thessalonians chapter 2 reading from verse 3 first thessalonians chapter 2 we're reading from verse 3 for our exhortation was not of deceit nor of uncleanness nor in girl that's a minister that's a preacher that's a pastor that's a leader that's the one that knows I have a commission and I'm committed to that commission and my exhortation and my exposition and my preaching and my encouragement and everything I do my ministration is not of deceit nor of uncleanness nor in girl. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, But as we were allowed of God, to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but god which tries our hearts not as pleasing men but pleasing god actually pleasing men uh, comes out of fear the fear of man if you fear a man, you'll wonder, if I don't tend towards his way, if I don't submit to him, if I don't go the direction he wants me to go, if I say I'm going to stay, I'm going to stick to the word of God in ministration, in exhortation, in exposition, in preaching, in everything that I do, I fear that man, he may persecute me, and because you fear that persecution, you exalt that man above God. God. and now when God tries your heart he sees that you are hollow you are empty and you do not have what it takes to take a stand and obey God like those apostles said unto the Pharisees will rather obey God than man he has committed unto us something important something that will save the souls of the people we are ministering to and God will give us the courage to keep by it all through our lives in Jesus name look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says ye are witnesses and God also ye are witnesses and you Thessalonians and all the people where we go to minister they are witnesses how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among them among you that believe now that's for the minister but the Lord won't see it for everyone in the kingdom everyone expecting the coming of the Lord he wants us to remain without blemish and without spot unblameable so we can be presented unto God when he comes in righteousness and holiness look at Ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 26 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word the word will preach as ministers the word will preach as those who are commissioned to teach the people of God and prepare them for the coming of the Lord must have the cleansing virtue and the cleansing power and to uh, to scrub them and to wash them and to cleanse them uh, and get them purified and sanctified that he the reason why Christ went to the cross and died for the world is to save sinners from their sins and that same sacrifice prepares the church for the coming of the Lord to sanctify and cleanse the church 
with the washing of water by the word. Verse 27, it says in verse 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Glorious Christians make a glorious church. Glorious new creatures make a glorious church. Glorious members make a glorious body. And this is what the Lord wants. And this is the goal. And this is the purpose. And this is the effect of our ministry. On the people who are ministering to that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle. Wrinkle is the mark of the old man. And once the old man is crucified, that the body of sin may be taken away. There's no wrinkle anymore or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's the calling of the Lord, and that's what the Lord expects. It will be done in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. No girl. I say no girl. Amen. No deception. No hypocrisy, no lying. Look at First Timothy chapter 6. In First Timothy chapter 6, we're reading from verse 14 that thou keep this commandment without spot or rebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the apostle was saying to Timothy? And what the apostle is saying to you and to me, he says the Lord can come at any time, suddenly, and very soon it will appear. And you need to keep all the commandments of God, all the commandments for ministry, all the commandments for membership, all the commandments to stay in the body of Christ. You need to keep all those commandments without sport or rebukable every day day by day until the appearing of our lord jesus christ and then he tells us in first peter chapter 3 reading from verse 9 first peter chapter 3 we're looking at verse 9 not rendering evil for evil nor railing for railing but contrary wise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. In verse 10, it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. His lips that they speak no God. We'll come to number three there. Number three is talking about vigilance. Vigilant, undistracted sight from glory. We keep on looking unto the Lord. Time of trial, looking unto the Lord. Time of temptation, looking unto the Lord. You see, your mind cannot think on two things, two different things at the same time. If there is temptation, if there is trial, if there is trouble, and you are thinking about Christ and looking unto Christ, you'll be an overcomer. Because while you are thinking of Christ and gazing on Christ and looking on Christ, you cannot think of another contrary thing at the same time. You understand he wants you in glory and he wants you to go with him when he comes. And because of that, you're looking unto him every time. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 55, Acts, chapter 7, verse 55, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven think about that when you're full of the holy ghost there's only one direction that holy ghost will focus your attention on when you're filled with the holy ghost and you remain full of the holy ghost there's only one personality 
our redeemer our lord our king and our peace there's only one personality the holy ghost will focus your attention on and he being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of god all those pharisees were there they were shouting stone him they were saying get rid of him he couldn't hear them he couldn't see them he was not diverted because he was looking at the glory of god he saw the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god and in verse 56 then he said and he said behold i see behold i see and you cannot take my gaze my look and my sight away from what i see behold i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god that's where christ wants us to be he wants us to be with him in glory look at john chapter 7 verse 24 john chapter 7 reading from verse 24 the lord jesus christ was praying to the father and in the prayer to the father he said in john chapter 17 reading from verse 24 he said father there is this is what i want i want the people you have given me to be with me in glory to see my glory father I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory they may behold my glory that's what Christ wants he doesn't want us to look at the things in the world that glitter but they're not gold he doesn't want us to look at things that are tempting and the things that will distract us away from the kingdom of God he says I want the people you have given me to be so focused and looking at my glory and then they'll be with me at the end of life that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world i pray that in every situation in our lives we'll be looking in the right direction in jesus name look at titus chapter 2 reading from verse 13 titus chapter 2 we're reading from verse 13 is talking about our gaze our sight and what we're looking at every time when you pray you're looking at christ who has given us the promise when you go to evangelize you're looking at christ who has given us the commission he says in titus chapter 2 verse 13 looking for that blessed hope looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ we're looking we're expecting every time we're not looking here and there satan is showing a picture we're not looking at that the tempters and temptresses are showing something to attract or to defile we're not looking at that and the things you know that they have out there that the people are picking up and they're gazing at that will make them forget eternity and make them forget heaven we're not looking at that we know that Christ is coming and we know the direction is coming from and we set our heart we set our mind we set our spirit looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God and a Savior Jesus Christ it tells us in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 Colossians chapter 3 we're reading from verse 1 if you then be risen with Christ dead with Christ buried with Christ in baptism and now you have risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God and then in verse 2 it says set your affection on things above set your gaze your sight on things above keep on looking on things above 
things that are spiritual and things that are godly and things that will make your mind to be ready when Christ will come. Set your affection on things above and not things on the earth. He tells us in verse 3, he says, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And now in verse 4, when Christ was our life shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. I pray you will not miss that day in Jesus' name. You'll not be looking at things going on in the world and then you're so distracted. But when Christ comes, you are lost in the world. You will not be lost in the world. We we'll come to point number three now. Point number three, persuading converted vessels to continue in his goodness. In Revelation chapter 14, we're looking at verses 4 and 5 in conclusion. These are they which are not defiled, were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. In verse 5, it says in verse 5, And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. As we think about ourselves, want to have all those things fulfilled in our lives to be undefiled and to be chased virgin unto the Lord and then to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth and then to be counted among the redeemed, ransomed of the Lord and to be part of the first fruits that is holy and then in our mouth, in our lips, no girl and no deception, always following after the virtue and the grace and the goodness and the godliness that we find in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only for ourselves, but for the people who have come to the Lord through us, that we also want them to have the same characteristics so that when the Lord will come, our converts will not be left behind. All those people who are members of our churches that we are preaching to, that you are preaching to, they will not be left behind in Jesus' name. That's why we're considering persuading converted vessels to continue in His grace, in His goodness, and to continue in godliness. Three things we're looking at. Number one, conservation of the first fruits in redemption. Conservation of the first fruits in redemption. Number two, commitment to the follow up of the redeemed. They are already redeemed now. If they are born again, I will want them to continue. That's why we follow up and we commit ourselves to following up on them. Number three, continuation till face to face with the Redeemer. Until we're able to present them face to face of the Lord to the Lord and then they see him face to face as we see him face to face will not stop ministering to them and helping them to be the people and to be the pilgrims and to be the peculiar people they ought to be in Jesus name let's look at number one number one conservation of the first fruits in redemption in John chapter 17 reading from verse 12 John chapter 17 reading from verse 12 while I was with them in the world I kept them in thy name I kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me I have kept and none of them is lost 
There are people the Lord has brought into the kingdom through you, through me. And we should be able to say the same thing. We're making the effort and we're running after them. We're praying for them. We're teaching them and we're encouraging them so that none of them will be lost. They will not be lost in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 41. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 41. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. They that received the word of repentance, they were baptized as they believed on the Lord. All these people who have come to know the Lord, we need to prepare them for water baptism. They were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. In verse 42, it tells us in verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They didn't go back, they were not lost in the world again. We don't fish get the fish out of the river out of the sea and then throw them back into the sea again they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers verse 47 it says they were praising god having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church and the Lord added to the church. It's not enough that they have been saved or they have come to know the Lord during the retreat. They must be added to the church, integrated with the church, coming into fellowship all the time with the church. They must forsake the world and love the gathering and the assembly and the worship of the people of God. And it says the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved let's come to number two there in number two commitment to the follow-up of the redeemed commitment to the follow-up of the redeemed galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 19 in galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 19 here is paul the apostle who had been instrumental in bringing these Galatians to the Lord, they were becoming cold, they were being confused. The Judaizers were coming in and were telling them to go back to the law of Moses. And Paul the Apostle was concerned and he says, My little children, little converts, those who have come to know the Lord, he says, My little children, of whom I travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Traveling for them and teaching them and training them and getting them much into the scriptures until the virtue of Christ will be, for, will be formed in them. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 28. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 28, whom we preach, preaching Christ in his fullness, preaching Christ as Savior, preaching Christ as a sanctifier, preaching Christ as a healer and deliverer, preaching Christ as a baptizer in the Holy Ghost, preaching Christ in his fullness, in the fullness of his, of his grace, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. We're wise in teaching them, we're wise in the follow-up, we're wise in giving them appropriate portion of the word of God as they are able to bear, but we make sure we show them the way of victory and the way to live in grace and abide by the grace of God, teaching every man all the converts without sparing anyone. We visit them, we knock at their doors, we carry our Bibles with us, we take another bible to give them if they don't have bibles of their own and then we show them how to have quiet time how to pray how to resist temptation how to block out all the influences of the past in their lives we want to make sure we present everyone to the lord perfect in christ jesus that's our calling that's what we are to do as we're doing the follow-up we preach christ 
I will warn every man I will encourage everyone teaching everyone in all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ Jesus number three now number three we're looking at continuation till face to face with the Redeemer till face to face with the Redeemer you remember our text that is a revelation chapter 14 verses 4 and 5 until those people came face to face with the lord they were not left alone we now as we are following after the lord we want to keep on following until we come face to face with our redeemer and all the people were following up all the people were encouraging and persuading to continue in the lord we want to do that until we bring every one of them face to face with our redeemer look at job chapter 19 reading from verse 25 job chapter 19 verse 25 for i know that my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and then in verse 27 in verse 27 he says whom i shall see for myself I will be with him face to face. I will see him whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another though the rays, my rays are consumed within me. He said, I'm going to go on until I see him face to face. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 15. Isaiah Chapter 33, verse 15, He that walketh righteously, that's why we encourage those converts to walk righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppression, we need to teach them that, to do away with all bribery and corruption, not to be part of that. That shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that's what to teach them they have just come from the world and you know the practices of the world will show them that things are to be different now that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil in verse 16 it says he shall dwell on high his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks bread shall be given him his waters shall be sure verse 17 thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty we keep on leading them we keep on teaching them we keep on encouraging them we keep on edifying them and we keep on building them up until their eyes will see the king in his beauty in his glory they shall behold the land that is very far off we're coming to first corinthians chapter 13 in first corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 here is what the apostle is saying that will continue until that time for now we'll see through a glass darkly but then face to face now at this time we see his blessing and we see the benefits of calvary and we see all the promises being fulfilled but then he says at that time face to face now i know in part but then shall i know even as also i am known he wants to continue until he sees the redeemer face to face you want to continue until you see the lord the redeemer face to face and you want to keep on following after following up after those converts until they are strong until they are strengthened until they are standing and then when the lord shall come they will see the lord face to face i pray all the grace to get that done the lord will give to every one of us and one of these days when the trumpet shall sound you will not be left behind you will see the lord face to face i will see the lord face to face in first john chapter 3 first john 
chapter 3 we're reading from verse 2 first john chapter 3 verse 2 beloved now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him somebody there we shall be like him look at this for we shall see him as he is we shall see him as he is until that time we keep on following after the lord so that when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them none of us will be missing we shall see him as he is face to face verse 3 and it says and everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure i will be there revelation chapter 22 reading from verse 4 revelation chapter 22 we're looking at verse 4 and they shall see his face and we shall see his face and i will see his face and you will see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads verse 5 in verse 5 and there shall be no night there and they need not no candle neither light of the sun for the lord god giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever amen. i thought the people of god will say amen. amen he will reign forever and ever and then when you are raptured when you are taken up and you see him face to face you will reign with him forever and ever amen. i rejoice with you I'm glad because of you that all the grace you need, all the power you need, all the strength you need is available. You will make it on that day in Jesus' name. And then all our members, all the people who listen to you uh, every week, either Thursday or Sunday, anytime, uh, and all those who listen to the word of God from our headquarters all together, none of them uh, will fall as Babylon is falling. They will not fall with well, Babylon in Jesus' name. And then a glorious day it will be and we all shall reign with him forever and ever Amen. and the victorious people in the house tonight the vigilant people in the house tonight the virtuous people in the house tonight rise up and raise your voice to the lord and say lord i'll be there lord i'll be there my converse will be there my family will be there, my husband will be there, my wife will be there, all of us as a family will be there, a local church will be there, the converts who are following up, they will be there, and we shall reign forever and ever with the Lord. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.